Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Carpo's channel. Today, we are talking about tobacco. Now, it's one of those kind of uh, subjects that are a little controversial for some people due to the fact that smoking is a horrible habit, highly unrecommended, and uh, I do not support smoking cigarettes, and I think it's a very dirty, nasty habit. And I say that as a guy who smoked for 25 years, from the time I was about 16 years old till I was about 39, 40. I told myself I'm not going to get past 40 and be a smoker. I said the same thing when I was 20 and 30, so. But I finally did quit, and vaping has helped me get there, and eventually I will quit vaping. But it doesn't mean that I lost my passion for tobacco and nicotine and the fascinating nature of growing tobacco. So, I would like to say this video is, first of all, I don't know whether it it's the kind of thing I have to make for adults only or not, but I guess I probably do. So let's just say that growing tobacco to me has been an extremely rewarding experience. I've been growing tobacco for about 10 years now, and each year I learn new things about it. I have several videos about Nicotiana rustica, which is the variety that I grow myself. And uh, I just thought since I was doing a little bit of harvesting, I would share some of the knowledge that I have for all of you and uh, somebody in the future might find it beneficial. So for example, right here I have two plants. This is Nicotiana rustica, the one that I'm growing, which is an Aztec or shamanic tobacco. Now this isn't your, your grandpa's tobacco, this isn't your standard even pipe tobacco, this is heavy duty shamanic tobacco that can be up to 10 times more nicotine in it, as well as an MAOI, it's got uh, some forms of DMT, a variety of other compounds in it, which may or may not be active through smoking it. The point being, it's very strong, and it's not the kind of thing you roll cigarettes out of. This is completely different from, say this, which is another variety. As you can see, it has longer leaves, and if you ever see tobacco plants growing, you might see that they have white flowers on them, or pink or purple flowers, but they're usually very long. The reason being is because they're pollinated by specific insects or animals, usually birds or moths. There's a specific moth that pollinates tobacco at night, and it has a long proboscis. And uh, these, but also hummingbirds absolutely love those really long flowers. Growing this tobacco here is totally different. It doesn't have the very long trumpet-like flowers. They can be extremely long, a few inches. These ones only have very short yellow flowers on them. And those flowers, no matter what variety of tobacco you grow, will eventually turn into these, which are seed pods. And as the flower retreats and the petals fall off, what's left is a seed pod. Now these aren't rattling yet, but at a point they'll start to rattle and turn brown. If you are fortunate enough to not get a corn ear moth or worm, or some sort of a bud worm that eats in and destroys your seeds, you'll have several seed pods on the top of one plant. Each seed pod can yield a thousand or more seeds, and there can be hundreds of these seed pods. So you're guaranteed if you grow a good tobacco plant, you're going to get like a hundred thousand viable seeds off of it. Point being that I ordered my seeds from, um, I believe, Victory Seed Company 10 years ago, and I've been growing from that same batch ever since, because each year as I let the tobacco naturally flower, it drops the seeds, the next year it just grows back. So all over my yard I have tobacco. So this is what it looks like, a very small version of it. And I harvest the leaves as I go. So these leaves right here, for example, are ones that I just harvested. These are small leaves. Uh, these are what you would call, I guess, the cream of the crop, the top leaves. Top leaves of tobacco are always stronger. And so these ones can be extremely potent. But uh, I want to try to stay on track here and give you the info that you need. Growing tobacco, first off, in the United States is completely legal. And as far as I know, in most countries, uh, it's legal. Ironically, it's the ones you wouldn't expect, like Bhutan and some others where it's illegal to grow tobacco. But if you're able to get a hold of even 100 seeds uh, and you plant a bunch, it pretty much will sustain you forever. And they're fascinating to grow. They're fun to grow. And there's one aspect I want to lend to this before I get into the different drying methods. You should be aware that there are a lot of people out there who prepare for disasters, for chaos, by storing food, storing ammunition, by storing uh, water, 
nah, you know, by having bunkers underground. There's one element that is always going to be valuable, and that is tobacco. I don't care what situation or scenario you are in. I don't care how bad things get or how desperate people are. Smokers or people who want to smoke will always be seeking tobacco. So growing a pile of tobacco like this could literally be worth its weight in gold or more so in a certain disaster. And so I grow for the sake of, in case anything ever happens, I have something to barter with. If you grow tobacco for yourself, it's not illegal, as long as you're not selling it. And there are so many things you can do with tobacco. You can make insecticides. I've taken leaves and I've soaked them down in water and then made an insecticide out of it. If you're not aware, neonicotinoids are the most common insecticide on plants. Neonicotinoids are basically just, as it sounds, nicotine uh, derivatives or compounds or synthetics that uh, basically make it, they're horrible to spray in the environment, you know, in major quantities. But if you make a small batch of this, you can spray it on any of your garden plants and it will keep off pests. So I've made probably a couple dozen videos about tobacco. That's not much compared to the 4,000 videos I've made on YouTube. But each time I learn a little bit more each year. So let me just tell you about the drying methods I've used. I have dried them by stringing them. And usually what I'll do is I'll take the larger leaves. They're all stacked in piles right now. But I have most of the leaves can get up to like, you know, this big or bigger. Um, I take a thread and needle and I string. Actually, I use a fishing line or else a thread and needle and I string them literally each one separate them by about an inch or two and then I string them and I hang them up to dry the first year I tried doing it indoors uh, a couple of years later I tried doing it outdoors then I've tried so I've tried stringing them up drying them indoors in hot temperatures indoors in cold temperatures outdoors in the direct sunlight as well as outdoors in the shade I have tried many different stringing methods and when they get to a certain dryness, say maybe 15% or so, I just guess. I was a cannabis grower for a long time, so I have an idea about, you know, the bricks meter, the moisture meter, uh, lighting, all these different things. And so I just kind of gauge it and feel it out, and then I'll stack them for a little while and then rotate them. So get rid of the hanging thing. This is completely not worth the time, and that's what I'm getting at. What I've found to do, um, I've tried stacking them so many different ways. I will stack my tobacco leaves in groups of about 10. And I'll set them on a wire rack or a shelf, a wooden shelf preferably. You don't want moisture to condense down below and mold. Let them stack in stacks of 10, then gradually rotate them and go by feel. Like, okay, so for example, this is the stack that I, two, two different piles stacked up now. And you can see they're starting to get a little bit brown, starting to have a beautiful smell. And this right here, for example, is my past tobacco harvest bin. So this is last year's leftovers or scraps. And as you can see, the color is uh, quite different because it's had time to cure. And I don't want to get too much into that, but curing is just as important, if not more important, than the drying process. Curing is where the flavors come out, where the sugars, where things adjust in the tobacco to give you the flavor you want. So this right here is my standard Mohawk tobacco. This is a 2019 harvest, so it's two years old. And then right up here though, I have, I think this is it, the fermented batch. And I'm gonna give you a brief explanation of how I fermented it. I put them in piles, just like I do with the other tobacco. Except, instead of separating them, instead of drying them significantly before I stack them, or instead of rotating them a lot, I let them get moist and hot. In a way, it's kind of like composting. And the guys who do it professionally in the big warehouses, they do it in these huge, literal bales of tobacco. So it gets hot inside, then they rotate them, they flip them. Um, when you're doing it at home, you can't get that same temperature, but you can definitely get them to ferment on their own. And 
This smells just like grandpa's pipe tobacco, right? My grandpa didn't smoke a pipe, but you get it. It smells amazing, um, but I wouldn't dare smoke it like that. Um, this is the kind of tobacco you might make yape out of, or there's a couple different ways that people pronounce it. It's the snuff, any type of tobacco snuff. But um, the stuff can be extremely, extremely strong. And I'm not here to promote tobacco. I'm not here to tell you tobacco is great, that you should smoke. And I want to make that very clear. I'm only here to share my experiences with drying it so uh, and growing it because it's such a wonderful plant. So when I put them in stacks of 10, let's say, and rotate them until they feel pretty dry, um, this might take, you know, at, say, 70 degrees uh, a couple weeks. And then you get it to the point where they're flexible, they're not crackling. You don't want them to be breaking off pieces. You want them to be slightly flexible. And then you just continue to rotate them. You just continue to uh, take the time to analyze each leaf and each pile, and, and you have to feel out what it needs. In other words, there's no instruction manual to paying attention. But um, I think that the stack drying method at room temperature is probably the most efficient I've found. If it's too cold, you're going to have mold problems and you'll want to hang dry them first. But it seems like it's more of a hassle than it's worth to hang them up. I just keep a light fan going and keep the temperature at, you know. It's been pretty hot in Portland, so the temperature varies here. But, um, so I think I've covered basically everything. Uh, the seeds will last for years. You dry them out. Once they get to the point where they're, they feel like they're dry enough, then you transfer them into whatever, you know, long-term storage that you want. So for me, it's just plastic bags. It just smells so good. And the truth is, I've probably only smoked this stuff once or twice in like a bowl with some other things in it. And uh, I, I only did it for the flavor to get an idea of what it was like. And uh, But for me, it's more of a fascination of growing. I've always respected and loved plants. I love growing plants. And uh, so I wanted to share some of that with you all. And uh, yeah, that's about all I got. These seeds might, uh, for a couple of years, I had these seeds I, I was selling them on my website and i had this huge bag of like a hundred thousand seeds i lost it somewhere i have no idea where it is i mean maybe it's in here with these i'm really not sure but if i find it again i'll i'll post them up for uh for sale oh here's some of my ghost plant i don't know why that's in there but uh love plants what can i say i love learning about them i love learning about the compounds and uh, mostly want to make it very clear that the compounds in this type of tobacco are very unique compared to others. And it's not your standard tobacco. <laughs> so, thanks for listening. Hope you gained something, some sort of a knowledge out of that. And uh, if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to visit my Patreon. I appreciate all of you, and I'll talk to you next time. Be well.